Hi, welcome to Bear Mountain. Well, one of our fall projects this year is we're putting up a, up a couple of uh, high tunnel hoop houses. These are going to be unheated houses and they're caterpillar style. We got these from uh, this year, this time we decided to use a purchase kit and we got these from the farmer's friend. Uh, hopefully they'll be delivered this week, the actual parts of it, but in order to be ahead of schedule, we have to get uh, how we're going to line it out, laid out on the ground. We've already uh, we went through and this was a very weeded area and it kind of goes against our natural philosophy but it was quicker for us to till it than it was to try to tarp it and 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 get ready for it that way so luckily when we did till it it was pretty dry so i don't think we got any extra compaction going on so what we're going to demonstrate today is is how we laid out uh, where each of the ribs are going to go each fiberglass pole you see here represents one end of one rib. So the ribs go across and the width of this tunnel is 16 foot and the length of this one is 80 foot. So we're going to put each of our ribs on a four foot spacing and the reason we're doing that is because we want to have as much maximum strength as possible from wind which we do have a problem with around here as well as uh, snow load and we do get the occasional heavy wet snow. So we wanted to try to minimize the extra work we're going to be doing to keep the thing safe and uh, so we thought the closer rib spacing would be better. So how we square up a tunnel like this that's 80 foot long or even 100 foot it doesn't matter the technique is the same. What we use are two 100 foot tape measures you can get these at any home center we'll have links down below on all the tools we're using uh, and we're going to use something that we hoped we would never have to remember and that's the Pythagorean theorem from geometry in high school but it's real important that we have things squared up because sometimes when you're on the land itself you know a little bit of difference in elevation or a little bit of uh, you know can kind of play a little tricks on your eyes and what you think is square might not actually be square so what we did is we put an end post here and then we're gonna measure down the length of this 16 feet so in essence what we're gonna do is if you can envision a triangle we're gonna go down 16 foot to uh, the 16 foot pole and then we're going to measure across to the what would be the next corner on the opposite side that's creating a triangle if you think about it 16 foot by 16 foot wide and the hypotenuse then is going to be 22 foot seven and a half inches approximately very close so what we have to do first thing is we measure out 16 feet. Okay, this pole is exactly 16 feet. So now we'll take our second tape measure. And we will run this measure from this 16 foot mark all the way over to the far side which would be the front opposite of where we started from so what we did is we created now if you look at the yellow lines we've created a triangle this is a perfect triangle it's 16 foot wide by 16 foot long Okay, we measured it out and it's exactly 16 feet. So that means this end of it is square. Now at the time when we squared up the front, all we had were the 16 foot mark on both sides, the end posts on this side. So the next step was we had to measure down 80 feet down a, a fairly as straight a line as we could using this 100 foot tape measure and we did it on both sides. So that gave us our rough mark where our end of the house was going to be. And once we had that roughed out, we used exactly the same technique we did here. We, along the 100 foot line, we measured 16 feet back. And using the triangulation, we squared up the back end. At that step, we now have the front end and the back end squared. And the front and the back are actually aligned. So they are perfect 
even though it's 80 feet down, we're pretty sure without using any kind of fancy electronic equipment that this front end is square with the back end. Then what we simply did after that, since the tape measures, we laid them out against the side again on both sides and then we went down and we marked all the individual ribs that we would do every four feet. And that's why you see this beautiful line of fence rods four foot across or four foot apart, 16 foot across, 80 feet down. So when we get ready to actually do the next step of construction, each of these posts will represent where a rebar anchor is going to go in for each rib. And that keeps it square and it should look um, like it is in cattywampus. Yay math! <laughs> so there really is truly something to be said for some of the things you learned in high school. No. Nah. Okay, after we've got each of our individual ribs marked at four foot spacing, the next step that we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, putting in a drain line on the uphill side. We already have an old drain line on the downhill side, so we don't need to do that. And the reason is, is, is since we're going to have plastic over this, it's going to shed off quite a bit of water over the winter time. And we want a methodology to make sure that it gets into the ditches and not flooding out uh, parts of the actual hoop house itself. So that'll be approximately a uh, hundred feet of drain line, uh, four inch drain line, and we'll be digging that by hand. Uh, but it should be pretty quick. It's not going to have to go super deep. And then uh, we'll start the construction phase of after that. Uh, we will be putting our fabric cloth apron at the base and hopefully by then we'll be able to start building the actual tunnel itself. So let's go on to the next step. Yay math!